Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the D programming language series. In this lesson, I want to show you one of my favorite things to do just as a programmer or a skill to know, and that's debugging. It's an essential skill that can help get you out of trouble. And for those of you who have seen my courses, you know that I like using GDB. So that's what I'm going to be showing you in this particular video. And I'm just going to be showing you some of the basics, so you can feel free to check out my other resources if you'd like to learn more, but we got to know how to get ourselves out of trouble or otherwise just be able to inspect or investigate code using GDB. And this can be a great tool for learning about code bases in the deep programming language as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So on the GDB documentation, you will see that the D programming language is one of the supported languages. And basically what this means is it can understand some of the symbol information that the D compiler produces, or it's sort of vice versa that the D compiler produces the right data that can be read into GDB, but we don't really have to worry about that. All we need to know is that we can use GDB. So a way to investigate this is to go over to the D programming language uh, documentation here. And just to look at DMD for Windows, Linux, Mac, um, and you can check out the different uh, compilers here. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose Linux here, and I'm just going to do a quick search for uh, debug. Because what we're going to have to do when we compile our programs is compile them with the extra debugging information. That'll tell us things like symbol names, line numbers, the function names, etc. That's important for us when we're debugging. At least it makes life a lot easier for us. So if I scroll down here, and again, if you're coming from a background of C programming, this will be familiar to you, but you'll need the dash G symbol here. And there's also another one that's useful, dash GF, which to my understanding emits more type information out from the compiler. Um, even from imported libraries, as I understand from this description here. Uh, so with that in mind, that will give us the debugging information that we need. Uh, we could probably get away with this tutorial just dash G, but I'll go ahead and use both here. Uh, and with that said, let's go ahead and look at the basics. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is compile my program this time. I'm just going to use the DMD compiler and produce an actual uh, executable here, uh, as opposed to using our DMD. And I'm going to add in that dash G flag and for good measure, GF. And let's go ahead and compile this program. Now I'll leave the program here to the left so that you can go ahead and see the source code alongside it. But on a successful compile, let's go ahead and see what we can do with GDB. Now I'm going to go ahead and use GDB from the command line. And you can see what version I'm using here. Any version that's relatively recent should be fine. I think most systems have at least seven or eight, which would be fine. I'm on version 13. So in order to launch GDB, we first type in GDB and then the executable name. We'll hit enter and then we'll get a bunch of information about GDB. And we'll know if we have a prompt down below here that we're in GDB and able to execute commands. So we can do things, for instance, like type in commands like run, or if you just start typing RU and then tab, it'll autocomplete for you. And if you want, you could even pass in any arguments. And this is effectively running your program dot slash test with any arguments that you're passing in. So that's one way that we can do things. So let's go ahead and try that. And we can see that our program outputs here in the terminal, the funny joke here, and the rest of our code here. And then we can repeat this process again, typing in run as many times as we want, this time without arguments. Now, at this point, that's not very useful in the sense that we are in GDB, but we're just running our code like we normally would. Now, if our code does crash, though, that can be useful. So let's go ahead and see how we can use GDB here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to change my data type here to a class. So something that must be heap allocated, which we'll learn about soon enough. I'm going to go ahead and just try to access this data type here. And then, well, since I made some changes to my code, I'm going to have to quit GDB here. Now, you can actually run GDB uh, make within here, but again, I'm just going to keep this a short tutorial. And typically, a workflow you can do is just recompile your program, relaunch GDB. And this time, I'm going to do it with the dash dash silent option so that we just start with our prompt here instead of all that message uh, that we got before. Okay, so that's the idea. And I'm going to hit um, Control L to occasionally clear my screen, so I'll try to call that out. But let's go ahead and see if we run this program, if we get a crash. And in this case, we do get a segmentation fault. To understand truly why, you're going to have to subscribe and watch this series. But basically, in short, we didn't allocate memory here. And it is, in fact, telling us at line 16 
in what looks like our main function. We'll revisit this underscore capital D main in a moment here, but it is telling us in the test.d file, that's my file over here on the left side of the window, at line 16, we had a crash here. And I can further investigate this, which is useful if I type backtrace or just bt for short. And that'll tell me or give me a trace of where I actually crashed. Now, there's some extra stuff behind the scenes here, but again, I'm reading this from sort of bottom up here as I explore the uh, stack trace here. And what you need to know about this, uh, these other functions, well, again, starting from this is the full path of all the different functions that we called. But if we look at the very top, we are in the main function here. We were crashed at line 16. So I can see the path or all the code that occurred at this given time. Sometimes that's a little bit too much information for me. So I'm going to go ahead and hit control and you can just type out uh, info uh, frame and that'll give you some idea of what function you're in, where the crash was and some other information if you need. So that'll again, tell me where I am at the top of that stack. Very useful. And then otherwise, there's other useful information that you can do. And just for example, debugging this crash, go ahead and print out uh, D here, which is our variable here for this data type. And if I hit enter, we'll see that it's well, zero X zero. Looks like we didn't allocate any memory here. So let's fix that. So I'm going to go ahead and quit here. We'll go ahead into our data type and let's go ahead and say new data type. And now I bet if we run this, we'll be able to uh, actually not have a crash here. So again, recompile, rerun GDB here. And I'll just type out run and looks like our program's running again. So that's an example of fixing a segmentation fault in GDB and how this could be useful for just showing you immediately where the error is. That's much better than scattering print statements throughout your code. So at the very least, this is what you must need to know about GDB or how it can help you. But let's go ahead and use GDB now as a interactive debugger and step through our actual code. So how can we do this? Well, the first thing that we need to know here is where do we want to actually start our program? So there's a little bit of a trick here where I can type start and that'll actually pause execution of my program at or near the main function. Now, for those of you who are coming to the D programming language from C, this is going to be a little bit weird. And if you're looking at D for the first time, just follow along with me that we're at some function here. We have a temporary breakpoint when I type out start here that will pause my execution before the program runs. And that gives me a chance to think or enter some other commands. So our program is running, but we're paused just before we get to the main function. Now, where exactly is this in the D programming language? We have to query around a little bit. Now, I gave you a little bit of a hint that there is this underscore D main that we had, but how would we find that? Well, let me show you something cool with GDB that allows you to just query what's going on. So I can type out info functions and get a list of all the functions that we have in our program. And you'll notice at the very top here, this file is test.d. That's the file that we're working with. And I've got two functions here. I've got underscore D main. And then I've got this other thing that says uh, test and then sum and then a bunch of other, you know, random stuff. And I'll tell you that this is actually the mangled form of this function here. It's a way for the compiler to have a unique way to differentiate between a sum of two integers and a sum of two floats, for instance, as a type. So you don't have to get into the details and I'll show you how to actually put a breakpoint here later. But the important part is this underscore D main. That's where we actually want to break or pause our program. So let me go ahead and hit enter a few times here and we'll see all of our functions. Wow, this is too many. Let's go ahead and just look at the prompt here. I'll move out of the way and it'll usually tell you something useful like Q to quit. So let's go ahead and just press uh, Q here and get rid of this list here. And then let's go ahead and put that breakpoint. Now, you might have trouble remembering exactly the syntax for that uh, function here. So again, you can look through the lists or you can actually query with a regular expression, something like this here. And it will just tell you all the different uh, main functions. But this is the one we want here. So let's go ahead and uh, hit Q again. Let's do break underscore D lowercase m. And then if I just hit tab, it'll autocomplete for me. 
and I put a breakpoint here. So what a breakpoint is, is it's going to pause me or pause my execution at this main function here. Again, that's test.d, the file at line 15. And that's at line 15 because, well, this is the first line of code that we're actually going to execute that's meaningful. The comment doesn't really exist here. Again, that's what that debugging information when we do dash g or dash gf actually produces. It tells us a useful line number here. All right, so hopefully you're following along and I'll go through this again so it can help you uh, as needed. But now the idea is if I run our program, and uh, let's go ahead and run it from the beginning in case it's already running, so I'll hit yes. Then you'll see that we are at this position in our code. And this is the next line that's going to execute here. Now I can actually type out list and it'll give me some of the nearby lines here so I can look at line 15 and have some context as to what's going on. So that's quite useful. I'm going to hit control L to clear our screen list again to show some nearby code and let's just type out next which will execute the next statement below this line here so i'll do next and we can see that's the next line that's about to be executed i can hit next again or i could just hit enter and that'll repeat the last command or n for short and then we'll go ahead and see that we're in our for loop and in our sum function and enter again and we can see some of the results being printed out here. Seven, our sum function is called again. Eight, our sum function is called again. And then nine. And then we finish our program here. Okay, so that's the idea. And I'll just hit Q to quit that execution. So that was pretty nice. We can now step through our program. But I want to give you a little bit more power here because that can be a little bit tricky sometimes uh, to follow along with all the symbols. So one of the real powers of GDB is to actually launch it by doing dash dash TUI for the text user interface. So go ahead and hit that, and immediately you'll see some source code. If you didn't get this window, you can also try typing out layout source here and also get this uh, source code preview here. And here you can actually see where we're starting our D program, and we have this underscore D main. That's what we care about. So let's go ahead and put a breakpoint at underscore D main. And you'll see that we have a breakpoint here at line 15 in our file, just as always. So let's go ahead and continue our debugging. And I'm going to go ahead and just quickly swap this GDB window that's above me for the other window here. That way you'll have a little bit of a bigger view because I think you're familiar with the source and we can see it in the window here at this point. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and do run to run our program. And then it'll pause as soon as it hits that breakpoint at line 15. And what's cool about this text user interface is that we can see the breakpoint indicated here with the capital B plus, indicating that it's active and any time we hit this code, our program will halt execution. And that gives us a chance to do some interesting things like decide what to do next. Well, let's just type out next here and we'll move to the next line. And again, this is where we start getting more powerful with GDB and we can try, for instance, to introspect and see what's going on. So let's try typing out print and D, which is our data type here. That's this symbol here at line 15 that we've created. And if I hit that, I'll see, well, we have test.data type. Wow, that's pretty neat here. Let's go ahead and type print D.x. Hmm, looks like it's currently zero, and we're about to initialize it or set the value to seven. So let's type N for next, move to the next line, and let's do print D.x. And we can see that we get the value seven here. So pretty cool that we can do this. So let's go ahead and continue on. And this time, I want to see what's going on in this sum function. So I'm going to go ahead and type out br and sum. So I can sort of type out the function name and try to put a breakpoint. At least that's what I'm going to try to do. And if I do that, it's going to say, well, make breakpoint pending on a future shared library load, yes or no. I'm going to go ahead and put no here. So it looks like it didn't find the sum function. But at this point, you might be looking at this and saying, well, Mike, I see there is a symbol called capital S lowercase u lowercase m here, and it is case sensitive. But why didn't it find that breakpoint? Well, remember, D puts things in modules. So we actually have this as part of test. So let's try to in br uh, test the name of our file dot, and then I'll hit tab a few times. And we'll see what our options are. And it looks like I have some here. And if I have one option here, I can just type SU 
tab and it'll auto complete for me. And then as soon as I hit enter, watch carefully in the top left of your screen, you'll see we get this breakpoint here indicating that if I continue execution in my program by typing in continue or C for short, the program will run until it hits either of these breakpoints. In which case, well, sum's the only one we can hit. So let's go ahead and hit enter and we're there. Now my window got a little bit messed up because it's printing out, well, why was six afraid of seven here <laughs> in the output? Um, so usually I hit control L and that'll refresh the screen. But again, we can see that we're at line nine here in our sum function. And again, we can play around with some of the commands we learned before, BT or backtrace, either one will work. And that'll tell us how we got there. So we can go ahead and see um, if I follow this uh, stack here, which commands we're actually on. Now I might need a little bit more room on my terminal here to actually see that we're inside the sum function, but I can see the next position is this underscore D main, which means that, well, we called the sum function from main in order to get here, which you can follow. But again, in a larger program, that's useful to see. All right. So now what can we do here? Uh, I'll go ahead and hit enter there. Uh, let's go ahead and hit next here. And now we're about to exit from the function, but I want to get some information here. Uh, let's go ahead and see what information we have in our sum function. So I'll just type out info locals and I'll see that our local variable here, compute result has been evaluated to seven. Okay. So maybe it looks like we were adding one to six here. I can follow that. Uh, well, let's double check what the arguments were. So I'll go ahead and type out info args and the arguments passed into this sum function were one and six. Pretty neat. Uh, so that looks like we have that information here. And I think I understand how things are going on here. So I'm going to type out info BR for our breakpoints and we can see where we've put our breakpoints. And I don't know if I really need this breakpoint here at line nine. Now, let me go ahead and close this window just so you can see the full output here. Uh, and I'll rerun this command info BR just so that you can see how it's categorized by the different columns here, the number of our breakpoint, the type, uh, whether it's enabled or not. I'm actually just going to delete breakpoint two here. I'll rerun this command info BR, and you won't see that we have this uh, test sum function here anymore. Okay, just our one breakpoint. And accordingly, you can see it disappeared in our window. So that's the idea here. Now let's go ahead and proceed next here. And it looks like we got some more output. So control L to clear our screen. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here is uh, hit uh, focus and source. And that's going to allow me to use the up and down arrow so I can move around here. And if I feel lost, I can go back to focus command. And now I can uh, type in here. Uh, but let's go ahead and just look at our uh, source window for a moment. And I'll go ahead and scroll down a little bit here. And I kind of want to be done with this program. I don't want to advance all the way through this loop. So there are things like conditional breakpoints you can look up, but I'm just going to take a little bit of a shortcut here and say advance to line 24. That's going to run our program a few times. I'll hit control L. <laughs> it looks like we're at line 25, the next thing that can happen. And I'll just go ahead and continue our program until it's finished here. So it looks like it finished executing. All right, folks. So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, shut this down here. We saw how to execute with the text user interface. You don't have to. Uh, we saw how to generate debugging symbols, and you got to see some of the different commands that I ran with GDB to debug decode. And you, you also, which can be something a little bit tricky when starting to debug D, find the entry point, we know about this D main function that is our entry. And I'll give you a few more tools there to find that and some other things you can explore. So the point here is to enjoy this, have fun debugging. Uh, if you know a little bit of GDB, that will translate to your D programming. If you don't know GDB, it's quite a friendly tool and it can be very useful for just understanding what's going on with your code. So folks, with that said, thanks for your time and attention. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss other DLang tutorials that are going to be coming in. And if you have any comments or cool tricks you know about, feel free to engage in the discussion. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.